Hisuian Growlithe's design is based on the famous Komainu statues, which are often called lion dogs in English. These are usually two and are found guarding the entrances of Honden of Japanese Shinto shrines. It's not just the design though, it's also the typing of Hisuian Growlithe, which is the fact that against the rock typing, which also is what most Komainu statues are made out of you know, rock. Same also goes for Arcanine and its typing and design. That's also related directly to the Koma Inu. Voltorb and Electrode gained the grass typing. That does make sense as Pokeballs were originally made from Apricorns and Voltorb and Electrode are both in the shape of Pokeballs, which is kind of obvious. It's also said that they have numerous seeds inside their bodies, which could be inspired by seed balls that also go by the name of Seed Bomb, which are made by rolling seeds into clay and forming a ball, and it is basically then thrown into areas that lack any sort of plants or decent vegetation as a way to help the actual seeds grow in this area and to sort of revitalize it. Hisuian Typhlosions have a design seemingly based on the Kamui Huchi, which are a sort of Ainu goddess of fire and the heart, which is said to act as a sort of gateway between the human world and the spirit world, with the flames around its neck being similar to those of the Magatama beads and having 108 ghost flames. It could be based on the 108 stars of the destiny from the Chinese novel Water Margin. Hisuian Quillfish and its evolution got their first hints in Pokemon Billion Diamond and Shining Pearl, where they both got mentioned in the book this season legend. In this they are mentioned and also in the canon libraries we can find this specific book and the mention of the two. They're in the story and they're referred to as well just being large puffer fish more or less. Now quillfish and overquill the evolution are obviously based on puffer fish as well but it does seem that they also bear resemblance to lionfish and sea urchins especially since it's able to also inject poison with its oversized spikes. This is particularly with overquill and its name derives from the combination of the words over and the word quill with fish at the end and it might be a play on the word overkill actually so overquill and overkill which wouldn't be surprising given this pokemon's arsenal of spikes if you know what i mean sneezler the evolution of hisuian sneasel could be based on the yokai known as onyudo which means big monk and this may be due to its poison typing as well as the appearance of the onyudo being said to actually afflict illness to anyone who sees it and it is also said that onyudo are said to be able to shapeshift into certain animals one of which is Weasels, the animal that Sneasel, as well as Sneasler, are based on. Hisuian Samurai is based on a Ronin, whom are samurai without a lord or a master that they serve. Sort of like a rogue samurai, more or less. Now, one of the kanji within the actual word Ronin actually stands for wave and might explain the wave design found in Hisuian Samurai's body and armor. And on top of that, being a Ronin was seen as a highly dishonorable of an act within Japan as well as within the actual samurai culture that existed, as many would end up as mercenaries or criminals, hence why perhaps Samurot has gained a dark typing as that is kind of connected usually to more sinister Pokemon. Zoroa and Hisuian Zoroark are in terms of design and colors based on the Kitsune mask, but it also makes sense as they are also based on Kitsune to begin with. And with Hisuian Zoroa and Zoroark, we also may have sort of a connection to sort of vengeful spirits and ghosts as well as revenants as they are highly aggressive to people that approach them and this is shown when you look at the found footage promotional reveal for Legends Arceus where the two of them are kind of aggressive against anyone so makes sense with the whole revenant ghost evil spirits type deal going on. Hisuian Braviary appears to be based on the Stellar Sea Eagle. This actually could be related to the fact that the Stellar Sea Eagle actually migrates to spend the winter in Hokkaido, which, not oddly enough, is actually what Hisui as well as the Sinnoh region are both based on. They're both based on that part of Japan, which is Hokkaido. It's the coldest part of the region as well, and the coldest part of Japan. So yeah, it just makes total sense that this would be the connection between the two. With Hisuian Sligo and Hisuian Gudra, it seems like we might have ourselves, well, obviously a change of design, but it seems like the change is in particular connected to snails. So we've got a snail-like design for the trail, as well as for Sligo and Gudra. But on top of that, it could also be that both are connected to Scaly Foot Gastrobot. This is a specifically, like, deep sea snail that has this unique sort of shell, which looks very similar to the one you can see on both Sligo and Gudra. And this kind of, like shell usually consists of a lot of iron sulfide compounds so yeah it kind of makes it look a little bit metalish similar to the way that this one looks on well Gudra and Sligo. 
When it comes to Yisu and Avalug, this one may specifically be based on a sort of mountain that's covered with glaciers, or a glacier basically in itself. Now, the ice plates that are within its jaw could actually be sort of like a snowplow type of deal going on, and on top of that, it actually has the ability to break through rocks easily, and this could be inspired by the actual process of plucking. This is essentially how certain glaciers erode the bedrock as they move along the surface. Plucking it is also referred to sometimes as quarrying, and it's more or less a glacial phenomena that sort of is the reason for erosion and transportation of specific pieces of bedrock, especially large joint blocks of these. So essentially this is what's causing certain parts of earth and mountains and stuff like that to sort of move along. And this is extremely visible within the actual design of Avalug's Hisu in form. As you can see that the top part is still glacial, but the bottom part has sort of well, moved along and is now more bedrocky and more like mountainy and rocky looking in general. So, which the standard Avalug that we know of actually isn't. It's a pure ice type, whereas Hisuian Avalug is a ice rock type, fitting perfectly with this phenomena. Now, my favorite boy, Decidui, he's suing Decidui in this particular case, does have a odd situation going for him. The shiny version of the Hisuian Decidui is actually the same color scheme as normal Decidui from Alola. However, when it comes to Hisuian Decidui, it has this kind of coloring that seems to draw inspiration from burrowing owls. Now, these are owls that actually burrow themselves into the ground and spend time in the ground for a lot of the time, which is really weird. And they actually could also have the possible color change going on for Hisu and Decidui due to how trees usually during autumn actually end up getting, you know, discolored, you know, they change in color, they get more red, they get more brownish, more grayish, they change a lot. And this could be a great analogy perhaps for Rowlet evolving all the way into Hisu and Decidui and actually growing in the process to the point of actually, well, almost deteriorating in a weird way. As for the other parts of its design, it looks as if the top part of its head, well, the hat that it's sort of wearing, is similar to the Ayagasa, which are specifically worn by samurai archers for hunting or in, well, ceremonial purposes. But yeah, that's sort of what it could be possibly based on. And it could also have some sort of resemblance to Kipak Kamui, the Ainu god of owls and the land, which would make sense because, well, literally listen to the connection there. It's the Ainu god of owls and the land, and the Ainu people are specifically connected to Hokkaido, which also is what Hisui is once again based on. Then we have Hisuian Liligant, which more or less in terms of design ended up just going from being thick to thin. That's pretty much most you can see here. There could be a thin connection to, well, we can just guess here, possibly a ballerina, but it could just end up being no connection at all there. But what are you guys' thoughts on this one? And that's it. Thank you for today. Bye-bye.